classic Halloween masks are vacuform masks and latex masks. It's what every single store has when you go shopping for Halloween costumes. Yay! So we did the vacuform masks and now we're doing the latex masks. So first we have to make the molds to put in the plaster it's, so we can make them. Yeah, so these are plaster bandages. They're super cool to work with. You can buy them in rolls and then you cut in little pieces and they're basically netting that has the plaster already on it. And yeah. all you have to do is soak it in warm water and then you put yeah. it on. First we had to put petroleum jelly all over your face so that it wouldn't yeah. stick, especially anywhere there, where there's hair. And um, you can cover the eyes. Yep, we covered Tyler's eyes. eyes. She was was brave and let me cover her eyes. You don't cover the nose. So that's where you breathe. Exactly. You can do things to make it so that you can do the mold of the nose. We were doing the quick and fun version so we didn't bother sticking straws up your nose or anything weird like that. I love how your mask looks so happy, Ty. It just looks like it's grinning. So once you do the plaster bandages on the face and you pull it off of the face, then yeah, you seal up the eyes and the nose because we're going to fill it in with plaster on the other side. So you want to make sure you've got a reservoir for the plaster, kind of a cup. So yeah. The first thing that I did was I stuck air dry clay on their noses so that I could sit them on the table and they'd sit upright and I could pour the plaster into them. And then second, you put the brush, the petroleum jelly into the masks so that the other plaster doesn't stick. Make sure the plaster bandages have had a chance to dry for a couple days. They set up super fast. They set up almost instantly, but it takes a little while for them to actually dry and cure. And then I mixed the plaster and then I poured it in yeah. to the mold. And I stuck these wood blocks in the back of the plaster so that they'd sit up nicely. Daddy decided to do the high-tech version, so he scanned his face with an app called Bellus 3D, which gave him this 3D version of his face. And then he took that file into Blender and he made it 3D and chopped out the section of his face that he didn't want to use. And then he made the shell thicker. And then he ended up taking it into SketchUp to clean up the edges because sometimes these 3D programs have difficulty and it, <laughs> you end up using multiple programs to achieve one thing. And yeah. then lastly, it goes into Simplify 3D. And in Simplify 3D, you set up for the 3D print and you can run a mock-up of the 3D print so you can see how the layers come together. The white part is a structure that'll help support when the blue part starts coming over because the 3D printer does it layer by layer and it can't print on nothing. So it'll print a structure underneath. There's all of them finished. Yeah. This is Sam drawing on her plaster cast face. Yeah. <laughs> so she wanted to be, who's your character? Tsunami from Wings of Fire. Tsunami from Wings of Fire is what? Tsunami is like, she's a sea wing. A sea wing, water dragon. Wings of Fire is like a thing with a bunch of dragons. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes Ty reads to me at night and she reads it to herself too sometimes. Yeah. Okay, we're sculpting the face out okay. of air dry clay. This one's Tyler's. What are you making? I'm making a wolf and it kind of evolves into a shadow wolf. Yeah. Then this is cutting out some craft foam pieces that were left over from Tyler's vanny ears <laughs> to make a fin for the back of Sam's. And that is packaging material. I think our 3D printer came in a long time ago. And this is cutting up that foam into the little horns and spikes for the dragon. So we Samo wanted to be something oceany. Mm -hmm. And, you wanted and I wanted to make a dragon. A dragon, so I had the idea. A brilliant to, idea. To make a sea wing from the Wings of Fire novels. Super good idea, yeah. Cause because they Sam are and I, water dragons. Yeah, Sam and I worked together on this one. Yeah. Right? We were a team. 
We sculpted on the plaster bases with air dry clay to get the basic shapes for the smaller parts. We were making sure that we were leaving some parts like the forehead and the cheeks that were the original form of their faces so that when we eventually put them on their faces, they would fit really nicely and snugly. That's the idea when you do a plaster cast, it's so that you can get a mask that fits really well on your specific face. So we cut all of the pieces out of this packing foam. It was squishy, so it's comfortable and it works well under the latex. Sam was doing her math homework while I was carving. Yeah. After carving the foam, we did a little bit of sanding. Ty cut her wolf ears and the little tufts of fur for her wolf out of the foam. First, I had the side tuft as pieces of clay, but I didn't like how, how that looked and they kept falling off, so I just made them out of foam. Yeah, the foam works really well. Whoa. Yeah, we used the blue masking tape around the edges of both of these to extend the casting so that we had more surface area to paint the latex on. After the clay, but before the latex, we put petroleum jelly on, but before the latex. So then we painted the latex really thin, we painted on layer by layer by layer. First, we built up several layers and then once we had several layers, we could glue the foam pieces on. So here we glued on the ears and the tuft and then painting the first layer of the latex onto the ears and the tuft. You can use latex on a plaster mold like this to do just little face appliances, like you could do little Borg implants, or you could do the zombie gore. Once you've got a plaster face, you, <laughs> you can build a lot of things on a plaster face. You could also do a paper mache mask on a plaster face. And then we use the super, super fancy technique of using latex with toilet paper to blend the foam pieces into the rest of the mask and to reinforce the mask. If it's just the latex, latex is super duper stretchy and it tears easily. So if, if you embed something into the latex like cheesecloth or toilet paper, then it makes it stronger. Here's blending in the Ty's ears and fluff with the toilet paper and reinforcing it with the toilet paper. So fancy. Toilet paper. That's what it looks like when it's dry. And this is the next day doing more layers. We ended up with probably 10 or 15 layers on each. It is not a quick process because you have to wait for the plaster to dry and then you've got to wait for the latex to dry. So this is a quicker process. This is with craft foam and a heat gun. A heat gun's like a hair dryer, but hotter. You can burn yourself really bad if you're not careful. Uh -oh. So I took a piece of craft foam and I laid it across her face and got it really hot and then pressed it down wearing a glove so I wouldn't burn myself and, and made it the shape that I wanted it to be. And then made all the rest of the details out of the craft foam as well. We wanted to do kind of a quicker, easier version. And this one turned out super cute. It's so cute. It's not classic Halloween latex. It doesn't have that classic Halloween latex smell, <laughs> but it's super adorable. And it's we, like the simpler version. And it was so much quicker, so much quicker. It, you know, takes advantage of having a plaster mold. Oh, there we stuck some bottles into the horns so that I could glue onto them and push on them and they weren't gonna just squish, they were hold their shape a little bit. Here we're gonna paint them. So we've got Ty painting her wolf and I'm gonna paint Daddy's face and Sam's painting her dragon. So I'm dry brushing. That's where you put paint on the brush, kind of get it, get all the bristles covered evenly and then you brush it out. I brush it out on the cardboard down there. You can see there's sort of a little silver spot, but you brush it out until it's no blobs are there, it's dry. And then you can brush that over the surface and you pick up the surface texture of whatever you're painting. It works really Really well for something like this where I wanted to get sort of the polygons from the print so that it would look kind of robot -y. I did like purple accent on mine yeah and then there's like the white line underneath yeah as I just thought it looked cool and then I added like some 
shiny bits with the color shift purple. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed with how you managed to make the wolf look like your drawings. You made it in your style, even though it's three-dimensional, and um, latex is not easy to work with. So, Dicky, yeah, the paintbrush gets all gloppy and, and like little balls of latex form on it, and you kind of, and what the, you know, toilet paper. It's just like it's a bumpy I surface. Tried. And I tried my best to make it look like my style of like drawing. Yeah, which is tough to do on a bumpy surface. I had to get like black makeup on the lower half of my face and around my eyes to make it kind of like blend together. But yeah, it's funny. In person, your chin was black, but in the video, it looks just like kind of a darker version of your actual skin color. Yeah. How do you think it turned out? I think it looks good, but without the mask, I look like a hobo. <laughs> oh, you wait. This is when we were pulling the mask off of her mold. So we just took our time and did a little bit by little bit so we wouldn't tear it and cut some of the little fringy, less thick parts of the latex off of it so that it would be strong. And you make sure you draw the shape you want it to be before you pull it off of the plaster and the eye holes. Because once it's off, it's all wiggly and <laughs> it's hard to tell what's what. And there's the back of them. You can smell it, right? That latex <laughs> smell. <laughs> I can smell it through the screen. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the foam one. It's so cute. <laughs> And there's the latex tsunami. Pretty impressive. Those slider spots are actually supposed to be like glowy scales. Yeah. Because in the book, the sea wings live underwater, so they can't really speak. Mm -hmm. So they use something like Morse code with their glowy scales. That's awesome. And that's how they talk to each other. What's your favorite part? I like the fluff. The fluff. I think I did a good job on fluff. It's very I cute. like the shiny bit. Oh, in the inside the ears, it's metallic. Yeah. Yeah. And there's Daddy in his 3D printed one. So we could use this 3D print to make some face appliances or just paint it. Robot Daddy. 